Hey, what's up turtles? It's Crick here with Black Owl Outdoors. And today I wanted to do a preview of a stove Stoney and I picked up at the Great American Outdoor Show that came to town in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. This is really the only product that caught our eye and really warranted a purchase um, from our perspective. But it's this sort of gasification style stove. If you're familiar with the DIY wood burning stove, uh, we did a few videos on this. It works off that same principle of a primary, secondary burn, sort of the gasification processes, processes of burning wood. But nonetheless, this is that stove. I'm just gonna get it out, get a little fire going, sort of talk about it, and you know, sort of just my initial feelings about this stove and whatnot. So this is a Silver Fire Scout. Silver Fire makes a whole bunch of different types of stoves. Um, for sort of off the grid living, if you will, all sorts of stuff. But this is a small scout version. It comes in this stuff sack. And one of the first things that's really cool that you're gonna notice, and I will, as, or we did as well, is how small and compact this stove really is. Now this is a nesting in itself. This is not its actual size. It's about double in height with this. But it's constructed out of stainless. It definitely weighs under a pound. I forget exactly how much it weighs at the moment take it apart. This is actually the stove stand that sits upside down inside of it. Take that out first. Sort of this has this ring, if you will, and these uh, pot stand feet. The next step, take out the bottom of the stove, move that off of here. And then as I pick up the meat and potatoes of the stove, that it, um, pulls up on itself. Under here, this running under here, my fingers tracing the gap between here, this is actually the ash or coal catcher from the bottom of the stove. So potentially you're not gonna start a fire with this if any ashes or coals fall down between the holes. If you look inside the stove, you can see the details of these holes that are sort of shaped in a flame. This is sort of a um, trademark, if you will, for, this, for the company of these the round holes. They sort of look like a little flame. This is where actually the secondary burn will take place, so the gas will come out of here and burn. Um, but this is a ring that's running the, the um, complete inside of this. And then down at the bottom you can see uh, another series of holes, and underneath that is the ash catcher that I just mentioned. And then as I take the bottom of this and put this down inside of it, it sits on it really neat, and then again you have these holes running the whole circumference of this and that allows the draft to come up through here which you know you get the process of burning this really efficient gasification style of stove and then put the <clears throat> top of this on here and that's all there is to it so i process wood for this stove and in my experience the best type of wood that's going to work for this now this will burn off all type of biomass but in my experience for longevity of burn time, you really want a hardwood and baton it down. Take the time to make little baton pieces of wood. Something like this. Got the angles on this. Got a nice piece of wood that's gonna burn long. It's gonna burn fishing inside of here. Like I said, you don't have to take the time. You can do this on a lot, but because this is the winter time, as you can see now, and we're above freezing out here, so things are melting, everything's really wet. I really wanted to take the time and make sure I got some dry wood to burn in here. I didn't really want to fuss um, with, with wet and you know even saturated wood because there is still a little bit of moisture in here just because like I said, everything is sorting, starting to thaw and there's a whole bunch of snow out here. And the principles of a fire are sort of amplified when you try to put it inside this small thing with the moisture content, airflow, all that is amplified. So you really need really dry wood for this to burn really well, or at least initially to get it at a, at, a, at a maximum burn. So what I'm gonna do to get this fire going, I'm just gonna, I am gonna use a lighter and some birch bark. I got a bag of birch bark that I always carry around with me in my kit, my DIY kit, um, that denim, denim kit I made. Got some birch bark. I believe there's probably at least a couple times of uh, different birch bark in there. Probably yellow and some uh, river. I wanna be careful that I don't load this too much and cover up all the holes. I still want to make sure there's a nice healthy flow of oxygen. Use that one to burn. I'm just going to get this fire from the bottom. Now I know you can load this with the um, you know regular fuel and get the fire from the top. I know that's a, um, a process 
or you know how you're even supposed to do this but in my experience sometimes that doesn't work depending on the condition of the fuel if it's wet you know in optimal conditions where it's really dry you probably can do that but since like i said i'm fighting the elements right now i'm just going to start it from the bottom and uh, you know see how it goes and i'm carrying this wood i baton down in this little stuff sack for my um, hammock camp chair i made just keep it off the ground See that black smoke, the oil burning off that birch. I want to be careful I don't smother this, add too much fuel too soon. Once it stops smoking, I know I'll have a pretty efficient burn going on in here. Fighting the draft right now, the steady breeze is not really going to help. I add one more piece, let this do its thing. I'm going to gather a little bit of snow from my cook pot. Get this on here. And the thing about making or using snow for drinkable water, you want to make sure you dig off or scrape off the top layer that's been exposed to the elements, the particulates coming around from the trees, the wind, all that. Make sure you get down to a nice, pure, pure, you know, um, section of snow. And you're going to have to keep adding more snow to this because you saw I had this packed down pretty tight to the brim of this pot. But as it melts, it's going to probably only give me this much water down there. But once I have a warm liquid in here, as I start adding water, it'll start melting uh, much quicker. Add a little bit of wood actually. Uh, see that flame going on? I don't want to let it die. <laughs> a little too early. So I needed to add more, uh, excuse me, I needed to add more fuel to the fires going out. It appears there's a ton of condensation 
and it's dripping off of this when I put it over it was like almost putting the fire out now that I have it at a pretty high burn it's doing pretty well put this lid back on let this water come to good old temperature and airflow is a huge huge um, not issue but design characteristic of a stove like this so you can add too much fuel and it won't want to burn efficiently just putting in a twig and moving one of those little pieces of baton what I have can make all the difference for this to start catching and get out of a really prime burn it's just something the intricacies you're going to have to figure out using this type of stove it's just going to come with practice and use and I'm still learning every time I do it I'm learning the small ways that make this a little bit better to use easier type of wood all that it's a learn in progress but it's really really convenient to have a bunch of firewood right around my neck these little pieces of baton wood really really nice if it wasn't snow on the ground it wasn't wet I you know I could just have it next to me but because it's wet and there's snow it's really nice to have this hanging around my neck gonna let this water get to a really nice hot temperature make a hot drink for me and Stoney this is Crick signing out with Black Outdoors later turtles